Hello and welcome to another successful garden design show. Now this is the start of my summer tour around gardens of England and we're starting out in Colchester in Essex at Beth Chateau's garden and Beth is a renowned plantswoman and she's created an amazing garden on quite a difficult site. And because Beth's garden is so inspiring, we're going to devote this entire show to how to do fabulous planting schemes. And we're going to take a look at other gardens. There's one just up the road from Beth's. And also we visit the Waterperry Gardens in Oxfordshire and have a look at their amazing plant schemes and plant collections. So let's get on with today's show. If you're frustrated your garden doesn't look as beautiful as it could, even though you've purchased lots of lovely plants, then help is at hand. Plants are not enough. You have to have a good design layout. And when you combine design with the beauty of plants, that's when the magic really happens. It's our mission here at Successful Garden Design to show you how to do it. And it's much easier than you may think. I'm Rachel Matthews and I've been a professional international garden designer for over 25 years and I teach garden design online. The very first area you come to when you explore Beth Chateau's garden is this rather lovely uh, long pond and this is really the main feature of the first section of the garden and this was a tricky site for Beth to landscape because she's got some areas that are bone dry just as you come through into the car park from the car park to the tea room she's got her very famous dry gravel border but in the main garden it's very moist and what I love about Beth's planting is that she was a big advocate of putting the right plant in the right place and I'm very much a believer in doing the same. So she's put moisture loving plants in places that have high rainfall and moisture and drought loving plants in the dry areas. It makes perfect sense yet so many gardeners try and do it the other way around. And what makes Beth's planting so successful is the large group planting she does. You can really see the, uh, in each area the planting groups are clearly defined. She's not scared of using mass planting which is very effective and it's a garden I've been coming to since I was a nipper. In fact the very first time I was here I was in a nappy. Um, my father used to come here um, to get cuttings from Beth's garden for his uh, plant nursery so I'd be wheeled round in my pram while he was busy taking cuttings. So um, I've been coming a very long time to this garden and every time I come back, even years later, it looks amazing. And um, Beth's advice to me early on when I first started out as a garden designer was definitely putting the right plant in the right place. So that's been one of my biggest takeaways. But also her other advice was make sure that you can really see each plant. And that's so vital in planting. So if you're in Essex in the Colchester area, I definitely recommend a trip to check out Beth's Garden. And particularly if you like cake, they do very good cake in the tea room. Now, just down the road from Beth's Garden is a private garden at Little Bentley Hall. Now, this garden isn't always open to the public. In fact, it only opens once every two years. But even so, it's well worth going to visit because they have an amazing plant collection, um, some really rare things in this garden, and also some pretty amazing waterways that run through the entire garden, making it a very unique uh, place to be and because it's got something for everybody it's lovely to just to walk around uh, even if you're not into plants but if you're very serious about your plants and sculptures for that matter they've got some very unusual pieces then keep an eye out in the local Essex press for when the garden is open so um, I had a lovely afternoon there as well. So before we go on to our final inspiring garden for planting schemes, I just want to quickly tell you about the plant design formula. For those of you that want to know everything about how to create a gorgeous planting scheme, and there's a lot more to it than I can possibly ever cover in a garden design show. Our successful garden design plant design formula course walks you through everything you need to know step by step. And it also contains a database of nearly 400 plants that you can organise by colour, shape, size and hardiness, etc. So that you can choose exactly the right plants for your planting scheme. Now, uh, we're going to do a special offer on this uh, plant design course. So if you're interested in learning how to do a planting scheme like a professional, then head on over to successfulgardendesigncourses.com forward slash plant design.
now on to our final garden in this episode. Now we've got lots more coming in future episodes, but this garden is the Waterperry Gardens in Oxfordshire. And what I like about this garden was the variety. They had wonderful sweeping herbaceous borders that filled vast areas of the garden and they'd done it with very coordinated schemes that were lasting not just for the summer but beyond the summer as well. And that's for me is always the sign of a good border, something that looks good for more than just the summer. And they also had, what particularly caught my eye, was they had a garden called the Silent Space. And this was a formal garden that you got to through a very nicely clipped hedge. And then you caught a glimpse through their wisteria walkway of a lovely statue and planting. Now, a lot of the planting were annuals. You can see the um, purple there. And they also had the sculpture in the middle, which was the focal point. But what I loved about it was the group planting of the grasses. And, you know, they weren't scared to use, just like Beth was using large groups of things. They did that here very successfully in the Waterperry Gardens. And the way the light there just catches on those steeper tenuissima uh, looks glorious. They're one of my favourite plants. And then outside of that, there was the very formal pond and they've got lots more besides to look at. So it's a great place to visit. And for those of you that are into your plant varieties, it's not just your bog standard plants. There's lots of beautiful plants that uh, will catch your eye. This one particularly, uh, Pink Queen, was my favourite when I visited. Now, I've spent nearly three weeks visiting some of the best gardens in the south of England, and they will be featured in future shows. So do keep an eye out for those. We managed to find some really lovely ones. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and there'll be future garden tours coming up soon. And if you'd like to attend some free online garden design classes that I do, go to successfulgardendesign.com forward slash free classes and I'll guide you through the entire design process step by step so you too can create a garden as amazing as this one. Until next time. Mm -hmm.